Hello friends, let us now see round robin which is another CPU scheduling algorithm where the selection function is the time quantum and it is a its decision mode is preemptive. When the decision mode is preemptive, it means that a process can be interrupted before it is executed. So this is how the output looks. As usually given the number of processes and enter the number of uh, the details such as arrival time, service time of each process. Then additionally we ask for the time quantum. Here the, what does the time quantum do is it uh, every program is allowed to execute only for a limited amount limited time that is this time quantum in our example i have given us time quantum is one that means if we consider that one as a one second then every process is allowed to execute only for one second now let's see if it comes to this process name arrival time service time it will again we are going to calculate this calculation uh, completion time of each and every process then based on the formulas we calculate turnaround time, waiting time and net turnaround time. So let's see how this, how I have implemented in this, in a program. What I have done is, I have took a queue for this. Let's say process A has arrived. Then we push it into the queue. Then immediately we pop it out and execute the process A till the time quantum is finished. When the time quantum is finished, we again push it back into the queue. Then again, once again, we we pop out the topmost element. To explain this, let us consider that the queue already has some two, three, ele two elements, A and B. The A and B be the two elements. Initially, A is popped out, executed, and again it is pushed back into the queue. Then next, B is selected. B is executed until the time quantum is finished then again B is pushed back into the queue. Next A is selected and again A is executed until the time quantum is finished and then again pushed back into the queue. If at all, if while A is executing, if a process say C has arrived, let's think that it hasn't happened, let's think that C has arrived, then we place C here. Then after the process A has completed execution, I mean it hasn't completed totally but the time quantum has finished then we again push A back into the queue then again B is selected B is popped out and executed and again if it isn't finished completely executing then it is again placed in the queue so let's see the program these are basically our inputs and this is our output as I've already told, told you earlier, the program is divided into three parts and we might be using some extra variables. You see, these are the general variables that we have already used for previous algorithms. And the things that you might find new are these variables, that is front, rear, Q, Q count. Here the Q count means that the number of elements in the queue, initially we assign it to zero. Then again, this is a structure which contains all the details of the processes, arrival time, service time, completion time, turnaround time, and waiting time. Then this is our main, which takes the number of processes as input and takes the details such as process name, arrival time, and service time. And this is our sorting algorithm, sorting process. We sort them according to the arrival times and if at all their arrival times are equal we sort them according to the service time the one with less service time is given more priority then again this is the same process for calculating the total time required to execute all the processes same as the before and the next we are calling the function called finding which is used to calculate the completion time of all processes apart from that we have another new function called as push which is used to push the given element into the queue and this is the function used to pop out the element from the topmost block of the queue it, it is of type, its return type is int so when we call the function pop it returns a value that is on the top of the queue next void check 
this is another function which is used to check which programs has arrived which processes have arrived see this is the for loop for a of j dot arrival time less than the current time and it is less than n which means that the process number should be less than n this check function is used to check which process have arrived in the system as you see this while condition it states that the arrival time of the process should be less than the time if it is less then we are incrementing incrementing the num count in the queue that is the number of process in the queue is incremented by 1 and we are pushing that element we are pushing that element into the queue by using this push function and again we are incrementing j value so that the loop will be iterated once again and we are placing a condition here that j should be less than n because if there is no such condition like this then the loop will be an infinite loop here again we have this new variable called temp st temporary service time flag count p process here p process means that it is a present process that is being executed is just a variable and we are taking the value j values j variable as equal to 0 this j is a global variable and it is used by all these functions especially this check function uses this value of j next t q this is the time this variable is used to store the time quantum here we are taking the input of time quantum temp st of i equal to a of i st since we are going to modify the service time of all the processes we are taking a temporary variable and storing the uh, service time of all the processes in the temporary variable temporary array time equal to a of 0 dot ai arrival time this we consider because time generally starts from the time which the first process arrived in our condition process a has arrived at 0 0 time that means the time can be 0 if the if at all the process a has arrived at 2 time will be initialized to 2 then we are taking the queue count equal to 1 and pushing the first process into the queue and this is very important because if you don't push the first process the loop will not start and here is our main part of the program this is our main part this is the main important condition as before as in before algorithms time should be less than or equal to total time so initially the time is initialized to the arrival time of the first process over here then we are checking for the condition if flag is equal to 1 or queue count not equal to 0 here the variable flag is used to denote that a process has been selected and it is still in an execution mode and it hasn't completed so if process equal to 1 then it means that a process is under execution and queue count is not equal to 0 this means that there is at least one process that has arrived in the system if one of these two conditions are satisfied then the control enters uh, this block of statements next this block of code is used to select the process all we do over here is we check if the flag is equal to 0 which means that no process is under execution count equal to 0 count equal to 0 means that when the time quantum we just use a counter here to for, as a reference to the time count time quantum p process this is the present process under execution is equal to pop that means we are popping out the element from the queue and we are assigning it to p process so the topmost element in the queue is going to be executed now next count equal to 0 as i was already said this is a counter and flag equal to 1 it states that a process is under execution next temp of service time p process is minus minus as we are going to check one by one second after another we are just decrementing the service time by 1 next what we are doing in this block of code is we are checking if the process has completed the service time of process is zero You see, uh, service time of the present process equal to zero. If it is zero, then we are incrementing the time. The next count is initialized again to zero. That is the counter. Then we are we have found the calc uh, completion time. This is the time. Then again we are assigning flag equal to zero. That means that no process is under execution. Next is queue count. 
as the process has completed execution it must be removed from the queue so queue count minus minus then again we are checking a checking a means we are checking if any process has arrived then we, we use the instruction continue when we use this continue instruction the control is automatically transferred to here this transfer to here then again this block of code is executed let us consider that a process has completed execution then what happens is as i said after this instruction the control is goes back to here it checks if flag equal to equal to 1 as we have uh, assigned flag equal to 0 this condition cannot be true and if we are checking if queue count not equal to 0 so if any if there is any process in the queue then the queue count will be greater than 0 so it enters this block of code so here again we are selecting a process process equal to pop which pops out the topmost element from the queue then we are assigning count equal to 0 then again flag equal to 1 this means that again we are going to decrement the service time and again we check if the process service time is completed or not let us now assume that it has not been completed then we are incrementing counter next we check if the time count count equal to time quantum in our example we took the time quantum as 1 count was initially 0 we are incremented it the count is 1 so 1 is equal to 1 so this block is executed we are again assigning count equal to 0 time plus plus we are incrementing the time time variable then we are checking checking if any new process has arrived so again we are pushing the present process into the stack uh, into the queue because it hasn't completely executed if it has been completely executed this block of code would have been activated since it didn't complete this uh, the control came till here and this present process is pushed back into the queue next if at all the count is not equal to the time quantum then this block of code is executed time is again incremented then we are checking if any new process has arrived or not then after that this else part is not executed as we have we as this loop is if block is executed this else part is not executed and this is the end of file the control again comes back here it checks if flag equal to 1 and count not equal to 0 here and the process continues now I will explain you with this example with our previous example so let's see enter the time quantum I have entered the time quantum as 1 and next we have assigned the service times of all the process into this temporary variable and next time is equal to a of 0 dot at that is the first process we, are as we don't waste our time we directly assign the time equal to the arrival time of the first process in our case it is 0 if it is 1 or 2 the time is equal to 1 or 2 in the next as a process has already arrived we are assigning q count equal to 1 that is the first process has arrived next push j that is the process a is pushed into the queue then this while loop is executed while time less than or equal to total time as time equal to 0 and total time is 20 this condition is satisfied and the while loop is started executing if flag equal to 1 initially flag is 0 but as we know q count is equal to 0 is not equal to 0 here we will assign q count equal to 1 so this if if block is executed now we are checking if flag equal to 0 and count equal to 0 this is a counter for time quantum initially they both are zeros then p process equal to present process we are popping out from the queue initially only a is present in the queue so it is popped out and it is assigned to process we are again assigning count equal to 0 flag is 1 that means the process a is under execution then 
temporary service time this variable we are decrementing so here the service time initially a was 3 but after executing this statement it will be reduced to 2 now we are checking if the service time of the process is equal to 0 since service time would be 2 this block will not be executed next count is incremented before the count count was 0 count was 0 but after incrementing it would be 1 so next we will check for this condition count equal to equal to tp that is 0 uh, that is 1 equal to 1 so this code is executed count 0 count is again assigned to 0 time is incremented now the time is 1 check of a now we are going to check if any process has arrived or not then we push the present process that is we push a back into the queue then flag is assigned to 0 and this part is not executed after here the control goes back to here this part we again check if the flag is equal to 1 the flag is not equal to 1 and queue count queue count is not equal to 0 cause a is not completely executed a is in the queue so queue count is 1 next we again checks flag equal to 0 yes the flag is 0 and count is also 0 is again the process a is again popped out from the queue it is again executed the service time is again reduced now the service time would be 1 the process comes over here the count is assigned to 2 the time plus plus means the time is now 2 now we are checking calling the function check so here is the check function the time is 2 so the process b would be selected and b is pushed into the queue so again the control comes back over here now we are pushing process a so uh, first we have pushed b then we have pushed a and next flag is assigned to 0 then again the control comes to here the, here the time is 2 and it is less than 20 now we are again checking for this condition presently the queue count is 2 then if this condition is also satisfied because there is no process under execution next p plus equal to pop now as i have already told that process b was pushed into the queue first then a then when we use pop out pop function then process b is popped out so now the process b is executed the service time of process b is reduced by 1 and it is this condition is checked as it is not filtered the counter is incremented then again the counter is checked with time quantum as count is equal to time quantum we are again incrementing time so the time is now 3 and we are again checking as we know at, at 3 there is no process so we push back b into the queue so now initially there was a and we pushed out process b so the top of the queue is a then again this condition is checked and this condition to select the process now process a is again selected and its service time is 1 when we decrement it its service time becomes 0 so now this block of code will be executed here again we are incrementing time count is assigned to 0 and we are, as the serv service time is equal to 0 the completion time is equal to the time its flag equal to 0 as process a has been completed we are decrementing the queue count so the now the number of elements in the queue are only one that is only b is present now the time is 4 since we have already incremented the time now we are again checking we find that process c has arrived so the process c is pushed into the queue now only process b and c are available and b is in the top of the queue so again this block is checked and this code is executed you might be wondering why this else loop is there let's consider that the, pro, uh, the arrival time of process b is 5 then the completion time of a would be 3 then the process system has to wait for 2 minutes 2 seconds so for that reason i have used this block of code 
Hope you understood. Thanks for watching.